The seed yeah. you sow is the crop you reap. What seeds are you sowing into your mind, into your heart, into your soul? What do you believe about you? If you're not giving transparency, if you have your walls up and you have your gates right. up, they're going to be gated. Uh, yeah. I believe it was Chris Rock that says, you know, for the first six months when we date somebody, we're dating their representative. And I, I tell my, my clients, oh. they come in, man, like, I don't want to work with you. I, I want to work with you. I don't want to work with your representative. If I'm working with your representative, we're going to get your representative results. I want to work with you. So be, be everything you are and be everything you're not. back <laughs> what's going on what's up it's your host it's your boy jamar jones and we're about to get into another impactful conversation on the forever podcast uh i am a founder of forever media also a national keynote speaker and the author of the book change your circle change your life and that's what this podcast is all about you know we get to connect and, and really collaborate with some um absolutely incredible individuals in all different spaces because really we're trying to you know challenge our brain extend our thinking and be able to learn from from people that are really doing it uh in their space and uh we're about to do that right now with uh with jamal marshall um absolutely incredible incredible conversation that we had so we got connected through uh through linkedin but also we just are kind of in the same similar circles, I would say, <laughs> of people. And it kind of was like, uh, all right, let's 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 actually talk. You know, like, you know, we are kind of know similar people. Let's talk. Um, and that's usually how it happens when you change your circle, uh, especially me so much. Um, you know, you start to, <laughs> people start to say, hey, I see you with so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Let's connect. And that's how you can really um, help you know, get that introduction, but he is a founder, CEO, counselor, consultant, trainer, uh, podcast host. Um, I would say uh, he's definitely, you know, uh, really passionate about sharing his mission, vision, and helping others. But yeah, we got uh, we got Jamal Marshall on the podcast. Say what's up to everybody, man. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you got going on in your life right now, man? Like what's what's um what's the you know the sneak peek in a day in the life of, of Jamal? Oh man, the day of the life of Jamal is productive. I don't want to say busy because we want to get past that. I mean, part of my headline is tackling burnout. So we don't want to be too busy. And it's not even so much even productive. Learning and teaching others how to be efficient. Efficiency trumps productivity. You'll know that even through science, efficient people get done in four hours, but productive people get done in nine hours. And so the biggest thing is, what are my big rocks? What are the things that I can get done first? What are the ways that I'm prioritizing? Um, and, you know, the thing about the brand, I think you know me even offline, Listen and Speak's not just my brand and my business and the, the name of my podcast, it's my life. If this thing doesn't go beyond the brand, then your brand is a farce. I know those sound sharp and I know those words sound like people are like, man, did he just yeah. say it? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the truth. And I think you can't really give your clients what you yourself are not living out and you aren't walking out. And obviously, also what you haven't taken the time. You know, I took seven to 10 months on my own mental, spiritual and physical wellness and also yeah. invested thousands of dollars. So I'm not one of those COVID coaches who got a three month LinkedIn certification and just branded myself some coach. I said I got laid off my job. Like <laughs> so, it has to happen. The field is so saturated with with coaches everywhere who yeah. have a, a piece of paper on the wall who are taking folks money, but aren't really doing it for the people like what is your why? What's yeah. your background? What brought you to that point? If it was just a layoff and you decided that you wanted to coach and brand yourself that way, I'm afraid that at some point you will come out and your right. clients are not going to get the biggest bang for their buck. And so I, I really feel the need and it's incumbent upon me to call that out for the, the audience of people that I serve um, yeah. and obviously the mission that I'm on. And, and talk to me about listen, then speak. So your, your company, how, why that, why that uh, company name, what does that mean to you? Man. And I know I'm preaching to the choir with you. Metamorphosis is a huge thing in business and in branding. Um, and initially the funny thing is when I first came onto the platform, I wasn't one of those guys who, 
got a vision board and said, write this thing down and, and plan this stuff out. I'm just going to say to your audience, I don't have a vision board. Never had one. <laughs> when I came on to social media, I was never on social media in the latter part of 2019, 2020. Um, LinkedIn to me was a place to put your resume. Um, I had gone through the grief yeah. of the loss of my father, the man I loved the most. And uh, my background uh, in faith is, is a Christian. And I hated Christianity, hated God, hated Jesus, hated all of the stuff associated with my faith. Everything I was uh, prior to as a public speaker, a counselor, a, a teacher, a leader, a promoter, I just threw all of that to the wind. And I would go to this empty tennis court in DC and I would just throw up F-bombs to the sky. And I said, you know what? You look a little crazy on this tennis court, cursing. Why don't you go into the woods? So there was some civil war forts around here and I would go in there and I would just keep throwing up expletives. And all of a sudden, being in nature just brought me to peace. And that profanity turned into prayer. And I would get these little ideas that would come to me for a minute and a half and I would just record them on my phone. Somehow, some way, I thought, why don't I just post these? And I posted them on LinkedIn. I knew nothing about the platform, nothing about branding. And these little one and a half minute videos caught fire. People just start following. I wasn't looking to become something. And around the time when George Floyd was killed, I felt like it was incumbent upon me to not be contrarian with the flow, but it was like everything was systemic racism or everything was there is no systemic racism. And I was like, I think there's nuance to this. And I began to speak to that nuance and I stood out from everybody. Everyone was singing soprano or tenor. And I said, I'm going to come in as an alto. <laughs> and coming in that way, it just began to open doors. So the, uh, the company Sparrow approached me and said, we want to give you a whole web domain. And that's where Listen and Speak was originally born. Mm. It was supposed to be like a racial reconciliation sort of whole thing. And I was like, do I want to carry this mantle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, big no. mantle. You, you just be, you be like this, just walking around yeah. on your shoulder. <laughs> I didn't know, man. It, it it was just so wild, man. And and I got invited to podcast. I was still working for anti-human trafficking. I, I was yeah. so people had me on their podcast, and people would listen to me. And I was like, man, this guy's a natural. And I was on a panel podcast, and the the one female was for host. She said, "Are you a podcast host?" I said, "No, nah, that's not really my thing." She said, "You should be. You're a natural." And that's where Listen and Speak uh, was born. Um, wow. So, wow. yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Such a also inspiring story of just transformation. Um, you know, kind of taking something of like the darkness and then just finding, you know, peace and light, you know, within that and finding yourself. It's almost like um, you just had to get it all out to be able to accept um, something new coming in. Um, is it, that's very interesting. Very interesting, man. I, well, I love, I love the company name. Uh, a lot of times I always tell people in my talks, um, the, the famous quote of, you know, seek to understand, not to be understood. And, you know, I think that your company <laughs> name, it really, uh, sums that up in a bottle, um, just to, to really listen to those things. So, from from your standpoint, from like so, what is a, a typical business day for for Jamal? So um, I know others. Um, we have a lot of entrepreneurs on here, or maybe aspiring entrepreneurs, um, or maybe people that just got a great uh, side hustle as well. You know, they're working their career; it's going great, but they're also kind of dabbling in some other things. So, what does your typical day look like in in your world? Yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm a certified counselor and a mental health advocate, so I feel like you need to live the brand offline. So other than the consulting and the public speaking, I love the counseling wing of it. Um, the yeah. public speaking is the most fun part. The counseling is the hard part. <laughs> but the I biggest bet. thing is always say presence trumps presentation. Everyone's like, where's your content? Where's your content? Who do you get present with? Do you get present with God, whatever your faith may be? Do you get present with yourself? Do you get centered? So when I wake up, you know, I don't wake up in sanctimonious stillness. Let's just keep it a buck. I go pee. Um, but after I'm done with that, you know, I come back, I pray, I meditate, I read my Bible, I read through whatever books I'm reading. I, I kind of get in an, in an inductive study. I start to journal. Then from there, I head to the gym, you know. So mm -hmm. for that 40, 40, 45 minutes, we got to get that circuit done. Yeah. Get that protein in. And then, you know, from nine to 10, I just call it my me time, you know. 
I used to have that time available when I first started running the business. And I was like, you know what? I need this time just to kind of ideate where like I cannot be available. And I tell each of my clients, schedule pockets of downtime when you are not available, where people cannot get on your calendar. You will thank yourself. Your older self will thank you. Your unborn children or your children will thank you. Your <laughs> wife will thank you or your significant other, however that falls out. Um, and then that's when the appointments come in. You yeah. know, so usually, obviously, me being a counselor, those who can work during the day, they are, are scheduling those appointments. And I also partner with an app called Tiger Hall. So I do professional mentoring. You know, understanding human behavior opens amazing doors for you. Yeah. So there'll be a counseling session. There may be mentoring sessions. Obviously, I need to jump on masterminds to grow and build the brand. Yeah. Um, any time in the, the day will be a, a meeting with the web team because, you know, your website's always going through metamorphosis all updates, <laughs> you know, then you got to meet with the production team for the podcast. Oh, oh, take this in, take that out, put this in. My production team is amazing. They do amazing cyber stalking. They, I make their job easy by leaving them very little dead space, yeah. but it may be certain things. Like if, you know, if a guest was really feeling it, it's like, Ooh, okay. That was like seven F bombs. Let's just dial that back a little bit. <laughs> you no. Know, depending on the platform you put it on, you know, so just kind of ideating through all that. Obviously, then there's the evening sessions because I'm dealing with professionals. So some people can do it in the morning, some can do it in the evening. And then uh, I volunteer on a Discord server with some mentoring. So um, it may be just like 30 minutes with those peeps. And then it's my time again for me to wind down. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. This is my unavailable time. I'm not on here. In the middle of that, I've posted probably some LinkedIn content. You know, I try to try to do it daily. Um, then it's my me time is my my downtime. And I may try to do like three or four miles on foot. I love getting out in nature. Helps me get silent. Or if I have some time out with friends and family and community, man, just to engage. Live yeah. your lives offline. I'll, even when you're building business, man, be human. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh and, and how do you how do you balance between um working in the business and working on the business? <sighs> that's when I have to understand that I'm only one person. Um, and when I work in the business, you know, all of us, we have, you know, we can get personal here, whether you have a date in life or whether you're single, sometimes, you know, my, my wife and my main boo is listening and speak. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got to say, um, we were laughing, brother. Let's just keep it a buck. It's true. It is true. You got to, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes forever media like that's that's your girl <laughs> yeah yeah it's just always nagging too nagging constantly <laughs> wants their attention you know i'm like yeah like, let me just let me do this right now no 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 you gotta come over here <laughs> you got your hair and your nails did come on man <laughs> yeah i just <laughs> pamper. what's going on yeah <laughs> but the balance is like when i share with you presence over presentation when i get present and when I journal, I tell each of my clients, what you write down, you have to reckon with. And so reckoning with, all right, Jamal, how much time, if your brand is about going against and burnout, you know, how much time are you dedicating to this where you're not compartmentalizing and separating yourself? And are you taking time to fill your own cup? And so sometimes that's taking the risk to actually block my calendar off where, okay, this is gonna be where I take four days. This is gonna be time where I take vacation. And let's just, I want your audience to hear this. There are seasons of sowing and seasons of reaping. Anytime you see someone's Instagram page and they're on the beach in a pair of jeans, you know, just drinking a uh, sweet pineapple on somebody's fanning them with a leaf, they made it big in three months. That is a load of crock. I live here <laughs> in Washington, DC. We have real bills and we got to do real work. Yeah. So yeah. there's seasons of sowing where you just got to pound the pavement, but you don't want to grind yourself in the powder. And that's where you decide what are my big rocks. So I have to prioritize one, my own self-care first, and then prioritize how am I filling my cup to make sure I have what I need to pour into my clients. I'm not just a coach. I actually am a counselor. So we get to the root. So I give my clients homework. You know, what is the best thing tailor made for them that's going to get them the results that they're looking for that are important to them? You know, so that's kind of how I balance things out. And then when I see where am I lacking in self-care and boundaries, you know. Am I making myself too available? And that's not also just on the professional level, on the personal level. We all have families, mm -hmm. you know, you got, I'm an, I'm an empath by nature. And so I have to personally say, I have to dial it back and say, wait a minute, I poured enough, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that's about just as much as you're going to get, just like the river or the ocean stops at a certain point. This is where we stop. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's um, I think that people struggle with that in general, definitely um, between their personal and professional life. They they struggle with the how much are they giving, and you know, I think most people are people pleasers, and so they will just give everything they've got, and they think about themselves last when that's really such an opposite way of thinking it's almost like the with the airport you know or the on the plane when you got to kind of take care of yourself first with the mask and then go help others it's very similar to that you know you how can you take care of others and also make conscious and, and real choices and decisions um when you don't take care of yourself <laughs> it's it's very it's very tough um for people to do that so let everybody that's listening and watching let this be a reminder maybe to kind of have that uh, self check uh, with yourself and then, and see, see what you can do there and, and kind of make, and I tell everybody that to just take a step. You mm -hmm. don't have to try to have a huge transformation in the woods like Jamal. <laughs> and be like, ah, this is the time. Take a step, take a step and just do something to kind of get you And that. Your first step might be just acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. And then the next step may be, hey, how do I take that acknowledgement and actually put an action to it? How do I carve out 10 minutes? Maybe then that goes to like, you know, 15. It goes to, okay, I'm going to start learning more. What can I read? What can I study? What can I um, just engross yourself with to be able to start to unpack the things that you have going on instead of worrying about everybody else? So I think that's incredible, man. So, so you as, um, <clears throat> sorry, I rehearsed yesterday. Um, I, I have a speaking engagement tomorrow and we're doing a performance and then I go into a keynote. So I, <laughs> I literally, I was, I was rehearsing yesterday and my voice is a little, a little scratchy. So sorry, people. Um, but you having your podcast. So our company itself, you know, we, we start and launch podcasts for businesses, but one thing, and so we understand the importance of podcasting, but what has that done for your business? So you, Obviously, people look at podcasting like, man, big time investment. You know, obviously, I don't have an audience day one. So, like, it's it kind of a, a grind thing. But what has been some of the big, biggest uh, successes with, with your podcast? And what have you learned through that process of, of having your podcast? Oh, man, straight off the bat, Jay, uh, I'm going to use the N-word. Not the one people are thinking about. <laughs> Wind it back. Or she's bringing him in. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, it's one of those podcasts. <laughs> like, Christina, put the E on it, explicit. Yeah, yeah, put the e on it. <laughs> Bro, it has been such an amazing networking tool. Um, and the funny thing is, like, and, you know, my background, and, and you guys have studied me a little bit, you know, I, I come from a pretty abusive childhood, you know, so perfectionism was like, that was my way of, of high achieving. You know, most of my clients are high achievers. And so I was a straight A student, you know, I'm not a natural athlete, but I call myself a supernatural athlete. I pray and I play, you know, I just was excellent at everything because it's like the fear of rejection from that caused me to say, I'm not going to be, if I'm being rejected at home, I'm not going to be rejected anywhere else on the planet. And so for me, I was so nervous starting the podcast and getting everything started. I wanted everything to be perfect. And my first guest was a five-time bestselling author. And after we did that episode, he emailed me and he said, man, I've done thousands of these. I mean, the guy's very well to do. And he said, I will put you in my top 20 of interviews. He said, man, you're a natural. He said, your understanding of human behavior gives you the ability to ask questions and unearth things that most people don't even know to ask. Right, right. And so that kind of because of my background in counseling and, and understanding of psychology, it really, I didn't know that when I first started listening and speak, it became within six months a top 25% podcast, just the, the amount of downloads it was getting, but also it began to go global. It was, I'm like, people listen to us in Australia and Tokyo, yeah, Africa, the UK. I was like looking at the downloads, like, man, all these folks like listening to little old me. And I used to hate the sound of my voice, but even as a networking tool, what it's done for my business, um, later this, uh, starting next month and also later in November, I will be doing a, a keynote, uh, a coaching circle one, and then a, a corporate keynote at Carta and going into different corporate businesses. So just by having uh, certain people on my podcast, they're like, you, I want you to come into my organization. Like you got some skills and we need this. And so it opens other doors for me in consulting and public speaking. And 
people say, okay, well, I want to, I've had you on the podcast. I, you should have this guest, or I want to bring you on there. So it just, it's like a whole web, not a web of deceit, but a web of opportunity. And it's right. Right. And then, and what, and what, uh, what made you do it? Was it just that one person that said you should be a podcast host? And that's when you started looking into it and saying, okay, I'm going to do this. Or like, what got you to, to do that? I want your audience to hear this in minds too. listen for running themes. Um, that wasn't, oh, the first yeah, time I, heard it. I heard it, but it was like the fourth time. And you know, you hear something first and you just kind of brush it off your shoulders and it goes into the gray matter of your mind and you hear it again. You're like, Oh, okay. And then you hear it again. It's like, Hmm. And then that one time you hear it, it sticks. So when that panelist said that, it's like it stuck to me that time for some reason because I had heard it and I just kind of ignored it. I mean, even amongst friend groups, they were like, you know, your voice, that needs to be on the radio. That needs to be getting out in the airwaves. Right. Yeah. But I didn't believe it because you got to think. Uh, there's a proverb that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I sublimely hated the sound of my voice. Even on camera, I hated the way I looked. People would always say, you're a natural, dude. Like, come on, get on camera. <laughs> get on the radio and so i say you know what why not yeah if not me who if not now when yeah yeah no that's that's incredible man that's uh that's fantastic i mean i i think podcasting is gonna be um it's just gonna continue to grow and it's just another form of of media you know for people to really the one thing i love about podcasting just selfishly just because i'm an nba fan uh is that we really get to hear from the athletes like what really is going on and like their thought process and different, um, you know, uh, deep dives into games and situations or some behind the scenes stuff like that's entertaining as a fan to watch that uh, instead of their canned podium answers <laughs> again and again. So for me, that's I'm like, that's what I love that that and these athletes also have another avenue after basketball. Mm -hmm. um, or even after uh, football or any other sport, because, you know, we we've worked with quite a few different athletes and uh, people don't talk about the, the people that get injured or something happens. They only talk about the superstars when, you know, there's plenty of people that are kind of on the C, C level of the team. They don't they maybe play for a few years and then what's next? What do they what do they do? Um, so that aftermath part is just really, really important. So I love how they have another avenue, uh, to go down. Um, you know, so for, for you, you know, one thing we were kind of talking about before, um, before we went live is kind of how open and honest, um, you need to be about your business. So I, I, <laughs> I want to kind of talk about that a little bit because, um, I always tell people you got to be authentic. But, you know, I know that's a very overused word, um, nice. but, <laughs> but also uh, I like to use just relatable, you know, relatable to the other person that's that's on the other side, that's that's consuming the content or consuming yeah, your information. Just be as relatable as possible and not so stagnant or robotic about your responses, because people are really feeling um, a type of way, all different ways. And uh the more relatable you are, the more success really, because there's an actual connection that happens. But I would love to hear about how you kind of balance that part about really, you know, being on open and honest <laughs> about your business, about, you know, the wins and the failures. Yeah. I, I would say that especially in, in my field, uh, so many times, and we know from a legal standpoint, you're demanding hundred percent transparency from your clients. If you're not giving transparency, if you have your walls up and you have your gates right. up, they're going to be gated. Uh, yeah. I believe it was Chris Rock that says, you know, for the first six months when we date somebody, we're dating their representative. And I, I tell my, my clients, oh. they come in, man, I'm like, I don't want to work with you. I, I want to work with you. I don't want to work with your representative. If I'm working with your representative, we're going to get your representative results. I want to work with you. So be, be everything you are and be everything you're not. And, yeah. and part of that, even from a brand standpoint, personally, when I knew that, like with my dad, like we have a huge story together when the healing happened between us and I knew with him, I could be everything I was and everything I wasn't, it birthed real authenticity in me. And I think that's why people can relate to me because they see themselves. They see someone willing to just kind of keep it a buck, so to speak, just yeah. to keep it 100 and they see different facets of themselves. And so I, I believe 
uh, in business, you want to be honest and you do want to be authentic because if you have all these walls up and you're only talking about the wins, you know, like I, I know you talked about my time in the woods and it was like a joke, but that was a process of a year. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that okay. didn't just happen overnight. Yeah. There's a lot of hills and valleys. Yeah. And, you know, the valleys I often say it. So and, and this may sound a little religious, but your misery uh, becomes your ministry and ministry really is just service. So the very thing that made you the most miserable the very darkest night becomes the vehicle that you serve others through. But you can serve others with a measure of authority because the dark nights you've known and the dark alleys you've been down. You know, what, what makes Listen and Speak what it is is not just because of the business acumen and my certifications. It's because I've lived it. You know, that's why I can get clients results. That's why I'm one of the best in the business. And even as a public speaker, that's why under the frequency of my voice, it has authority because it's lived offline. Mm. So. Yeah. And, and what has the results been for you? uh just being open and honest and and being being yourself man from a I'm, business perspective because i i think people like to see also what's possible yeah the funny thing is is like and i was on a, a guy uh by the name of travis lackner his podcast travis hey <laughs> shout out travis what's up t that's the boy <laughs> that's the boy man what's good okay what's good baby so and I told him something I often say, I need to coin this phrase and copyright it because you know people love stealing intellectual property, but lurkers are legends. You never know who is watching. You know, we, we think in terms of likes and comments, but it's people behind the scenes and you never know how high up or wherever they may sit. They're watching you. They're watching your every move. And so me just being myself has opened up crazy doors where someone says, you know, three weeks ago, well, not three weeks ago, actually two months ago, when a billionaire said, I want to come on your podcast and then opened up their network of podcasters for me to come on. Oh Those God. are things that are happening for me and gave me their WhatsApp, gave me their personal number. So anytime I want to, I can just pick up the and just call them. Yeah. You know, those are the doors that open when you are just yourself. When you when you tell your story, not someone else's story, not the story of chat GPT, but your story. Right. <laughs> People want to hear you, the raw deal of you. And then also me just being myself, I had a, a ghostwriter. It's weird because they say you, you write such great copy, but they say it's time for you to write a book. And so we're co-authoring a book together on the, oh, nice. you'll probably ask me this later on the neuroplasticity of the brain. And they were, you know, giving me all these interview questions. And I felt afraid to like share some stuff. But I said, I'm giving all my good ideas. Now they said, Jamal, once you write your first book, like 10 books will come out of that. You That that head God has given you is full of ideas and ideals that the world needs to hear. So yeah. these are just a few of the things. I'm just spilling a little bit of tea on what happens when you're just yourself from a business perspective, how it networks you with people who've been watching you, who may not like and comment on your stuff, but they're waiting to work with you. Yeah. And it's uh, one of our largest uh, clients was just that. Uh, they were just watching from afar, never liked anything. <laughs> commented nothing next thing you know i get a i get a message and like hey we'd love to talk about ways that you know um we can do things differently um in our in our company and um also to kind of connect with diverse communities and looks like you have a lot of engaging ways of of doing that uh and it's just crazy because um i honestly believe that the content was the reason for what got that door open but also what closed the deal, because what happened is I had the initial meeting and then three months went by, didn't hear a peep, nothing mm -hmm. from them. And then they scheduled another meeting, conversation for 30 minutes, and then nothing for another three months, like three, four months. So total, it was like eight months had gone by from the first initial conversation. And then the last, the last time that when we talked, they were like, okay, we're ready. And here's our budget. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and it was, it was a good budget. <laughs> I was saying it was a good, you know, especially back then this was um, like two and a half, three years ago. So this mm -hmm. was, this is really good, but it was, but it just, it just confirmed that just being yourself, being authentic, being relatable, and then being consistent mm -hmm. with that, with that, with your brand and that messaging and being out there and in front of people and top of mind, people then they, they just want to see. They just see, want to see what's going on. And then eventually they'll, they'll, they'll make their decision for themselves. And then by then you're basically not selling anymore. You're just, <laughs> you're just giving them the solution and saying, Hey, you know, let's, let's work and let's figure this out. Um, which is, which is, in, which is absolutely incredible, man. And, um, and another thing that you said that, uh, 
you know, about, about the um, the misery turns into your ministry, it reminded me of Batman. I'm a huge DC comic book fan. So. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, so, I'm like, that's basically Batman, you know, uh, it's turning something so horrific into his strength and then using that every day. So, you know, get your Batman on, you know, get get your Dark Knight on. So that's, that's the, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that, that merch. is merch. Yeah, that's, that's some merch. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh man. So I I think um one thing I want as as you're growing this business, how how have you navigated just being a black entrepreneur? Um, and I don't know if I've even directly asked you that before, but like how have you navigated that space and what kind of challenges um maybe have you faced that you had to overcome uh through your journey? And Jay, that's a great question, man. And I want your audience to hear this. And I, and I hope that they really get this because I think, you know, me, I, I, I think and try to live on the highest frequency. The seed yeah. you sow is the crop you reap. What seeds are you sowing into your mind, into your heart, into your soul? What do you believe about you? Um, and so I'm just going to give some backstory real quick in the interest of time. Uh, back in 2010 to 2017, uh, especially from 2015, when there was a split in the organization, I was one black staff member in Williamstown, Kentucky. I was one of three senior counselors uh, and on the public speaking team and on the promotion team. So you can imagine uh, yeah. what that was like. I'm originally from LA, lived most of my life in DC. So you got this like major city dude in the middle of nowheresville uh, at this organization. Yeah, <laughs> it's going. You 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 can read about it in the book, but so, right. I had to learn how to move in a room full of snakes and deposit my venom. And that's exactly what I did. And don't worry, folks, my venom doesn't kill. It doesn't sting. <laughs> it sets things right. Um, and so running my own business, um, the energy I lead with is that there's no fourth wall, fourth wall in my way that I can't break. Um, a lot of times we we're trained and our mind is trained to come with limiting beliefs is that I can't or I won't because I'm in this space and we create for ourselves, And I even work with clients in this, a glass ceiling because of the narrative, which has been placed on us. And it's like, well, come on, Alice in Wonderland, get into reality, open up the newspaper, mm -hmm. turn on the news. Y'all, I live in Washington, DC. So trust me, I'm surrounded by. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> but at the same way, if you enter, and I know you, you, you are in these spaces often in boardrooms with really high powered mm -hmm. people. You ever go into a neighborhood where they know you're not from around there? Yeah, so I, 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 this is the streets of D.C. I remember I was seeing my my great aunt. She was dying in the hospital. This was way back in 2008. And I was up in East Orange. Bruh. Mm -hmm. So when I got off that train, I'm cool with handling myself in the hood, but they could still tell I wasn't from around. There. It was just right. something about my countenance that gave me away. And I'm good. I'm, I'm sitting right here in front of you. Nothing happened. But a lot of times black entrepreneurs or black business and career people walk into these spaces with that insecurity. And when you wear that and you lead with that, again, the seed you sow is the crop you reap. So when I walk into any space, whether it's here in the United States, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in China, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in South America, I have my head held high. And it's not an arrogance. It's a confidence in God because I carry the creator inside of me. Mm. And if you try me and you just try to try me, you're only going to embarrass yourself. No one wants to embarrass themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't try them. You know, that's as simple as that. As simple as that. No, I, it's, that's actually incredible advice. Incredible. Um, because it's all about the, your framework of, of your mind and what do you want to get out of, out of the situations? So either you're going to go there with your armor on and you're ready for war and being like, you know, I, I'm here to attack the situation or you're going to be your tail between your legs and, you know, be like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't be here. You're looking around, you look nervous. I mean, the, it, people feed off that energy and they're going to mm -hmm. know, you know? So if you're looking around, like, maybe I shouldn't be here. Hopefully I don't say the wrong things. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. And you just, you start looking like you shouldn't be there. <laughs> like that's the one thing you just look like you should be there. <laughs> it's like the best, best advice um, in any situation. And then also be yourself. So that's the other thing. Don't conform to what the room and that, you know, obviously it's great to understand body language and how to interact with individuals, different communication styles. These are all things that you can learn along the way. 
but make sure that you say, hey, I'm meant to be in this room, but also be yourself. So don't try to act like anybody else. Just be yourself because that's why you're in the room in the first place. So just <laughs> just, just go into that. And, and that's when I made that biggest switch for myself. And I think that's where my brand and, and my company started to grow is when I started to tap deeper into myself and let everybody know all the background you know, of what, of what, who I am, what I represent. I wear this cap everywhere I go. I don't care where I'm in. Like, it's just, it's a part of me. This is who I am, man. I mean, this is, so the more I can tap into that, then people just know me for, oh man, that's the, that's Jamar. You know, you see him with the cap over there. Like that's, and I'm the only guy with the cap on in the <laughs> entire venue. So it's just being yourself um, and showing up. Um, really be the person that you want to be is is really the 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 phrase that i hear a lot of is just grow into that and the more that you want the more that you're emulating the person that you want to be you will become that person and then it's just a it's a cycle jay that's it you said it so perfectly and i, I love the fact that i know when i see you i always see the hat yeah i see the jacket i see a fly shirt yeah. and you're creating a brand awareness but that's also the person you want to be but that's the seed that you are sowing yeah. And as you are sowing that seed, you are reaping the benefit. You are reaping that harvest. Now, you're a DC person. I'm definitely a Marvel DC. So I'm a yeah. fanatic. And I say yeah. so often the mind is a control tower to the body. You know, understand right. how the mind works. Yeah. And so when I'm in these spaces, and I'm sure when you are, already understand how my person, I don't even call an opponent, how they're thinking. You know, mm. I, I get how they're thinking, how they're ideating. You know, they may be already four steps ahead, but baby, I'm already eight steps ahead of you. <laughs> so let's just sit down hash this out and let's get into it you know yeah. i worked for an international organization for the better part of five years and i had to learn to study from a psychological standpoint high and low context culture so so many times mm. people think i've come to this corporate thing and no one's buying my idea you know people from a higher context are just more outwardly expressive and people from a lower context just keep things inward and even within the diaspora you go to let's just say germany very low context very quiet you go to Poland, they're just all in your face. They're very high context. Within Africa, Kenyans, very contained. Nigerians, do we even need to go there? You know, <laughs> understand the context yeah. of who you are around. And so what you were saying about the mind, that just resonated so heavily with me, obviously being yeah. my field. You yeah, know, of course. You create that reality. <laughs> and if you're not being who you want to be, you're going to be a second rate imitation of who God created another man or woman to be. Don't mm. do it to yourselves. Yeah, man. Incredible. Absolutely incredible, man. Where can people get connected with you? How can they like what's the best way to connect? So I always I always preface this question um, with this is that this is you know, all about changing your circle. And so a lot of people listen to this to be able to find new ways of or new approaches um, to do that. And I always encourage people to actually connect <laughs> with these individuals that I bring onto the podcast and don't just listen and be like, well, maybe I don't have anything to offer. You never know what's going to happen if you just if you don't shoot the shot, you know, you got to shoot the shot. So just, you know, especially if they have a podcast, it sounds like you would be more than happy to consider that to, to be on. But how can people get connected with you if they want to explore and, and, and maybe even do some business with you? Awesome. Uh, one of the easiest ways to get linked into me is LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally the only Jamal that spells my name J-A-H-M-A-A-L on LinkedIn. I'm the easiest person to find. So, you know, I got to be careful about my footprint on that platform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easiest sure. way or my website, Listen Then Speak. Um, and you can drop it. It'll go straight to my email, uh, which is Jamal at ListenThenSpeak.com. But LinkedIn is one of the easiest ways to find me. I'm pretty responsive when I can be. Obviously, I set aside, you know, 50 minute sprints for for that time and for email time. But that's the easiest way to find me, either LinkedIn or the website. And it ain't that many Jamals out there. So trust me, if you want to find me, I'm easy to find. Yeah, no, that's incredible. And we're definitely looking forward to the book as well. Um, so please let us know. Shoot us, shoot us some stuff over and we'll definitely share that out um, once it's completed. And, and honestly, it's um, writing a book is no easy feat. <laughs> so, Bro. so more power to you <laughs> but it's very rewarding once it's done and it's out there in the world um and you never know who it's going to touch and what lives you're, you're transforming i mean you're already transforming lives but 
it's almost like an extension of you that you can then share uh, with more and more people. So absolutely incredible, man. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, it was absolutely a pleasure. Uh, if you're listening, definitely subscribe, like, comment, share, do all the things. Um, if you're watching the same, subscribe uh, to the podcast as we're we're coming out with more and more content. And definitely give us a follow. You know, if you want more inspiring stories like this uh, directly to your inbox, definitely subscribe at forevermedia.com. And we're just going to keep it rock, rocking. And don't forget, you can change your circle. You can change your life. We're out. Peace. Grace and peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell for more amazing content that we're going to be putting out. And don't forget, you can change your circle to change your life.